Right, this next lesson in Unit 2 of Richard and John is actually the last lesson in Unit 2. And we're going to be looking at John and how he lost Normandy by 1204. Now, this is the start of King John's reign. Remembering that Richard died in 1199 and by 1204, John had managed, managed to lose one of the most important areas that made up the Angevin Empire. Now, if you just look at the map on the screen, what we need to understand is that blue part there is the royal area of the French king, which would be Philip. And the rest of it belonged to the Angevin king, which in this case is John. So it's really important that we understand that John isn't just the king of England, but he's also the king of a vast area. Because under primogeniture, he would have taken on that land, being the eldest legitimate son. Now the first thing we need to understand is what was John's position in 1199. So when John became the King of England, what was his position? And we need to understand the following. What reasons did John have that were in, in, in his favour in 1199? And then, what reasons did Philip have in his favour in 1199? So we've got a range of statements here. So we've got, when Richard died, leading barons in England showed their support to John. There were lots of barons who held land in England and Normandy. Supporting John was vital, so they kept the land together. After Richard's death, leading men in Brittany chose Arthur as the new ruler, as did many powerful barons in Anjou, Maine and Touraine. Now, if we can't remember who Arthur is, Arthur was actually John's nephew. And a lot of people thought that because John had a nephew, the nephew actually deserved to be the king more than John. And the fact that some of the key people in the Angevin Empire, such as in Brittany, Anjou, Maine and Touraine, thought that John didn't deserve to be king, this could cause problems for John. Some Normans didn't trust John. A Norman is someone who lives in Normandy. They remember how he plotted against Richard. Philip was an experienced leader and a cunning diplomat, which means he was really good at talking to other people and creating positive relationships. People in England were unhappy due to the number of taxes placed on them when Richard was alive. Even though he was dead now, people were still unhappy at how they were being treated. And this unhappiness would instantly um, pass over to John. Richard's alliances were still there. So when Richard died, John picked up the key alliances. He picked up uh, the alliances of the Count of Flanders and the Count of Bologna. John also had the promise of an alliance from Otto, the man who was most likely going to become the German Emperor. Normandy was well defended with impressive new fortress of Chateau Gallard. So in the previous video uh, where Richard reclaimed Normandy, you will learn a bit about Chateau Gallard and how it was very important to help Richard uh, develop his uh, stronghold on Normandy. And then by 1199, Philip was just as rich as John because his wealth had grown significantly. So what you need to under do is, first of all, highlight reason in John's favour, reason in Philip's favour. And then once you've done that, overall, do you think John was in a good position or a bad position in 1199? Write a medium peel paragraph on this. And the key thing here is explaining whether why it's a good position or a bad position. I am thinking that a lot of people might sway towards the good. But there are some aspects of this that are bad. John did have some challenges to his rule. But on the whole, John had a good position in 1199. Because he actually adopted a lot of what Richard left him. So if you leave... If you spend, sorry, about 10 minutes on this task, pause the video and then you can move on to look at what John did when he became the King of England. Now, we need to understand the build-up to John losing Normandy. And it comes in five stages, which we'll talk about in a bit. But what we do need to understand is, is that as soon as Richard died, Philip tried to invade Normandy and Arthur swore homage to Philip. This put John's rule under threat the moment he became king. But at the start of John's reign, John was a very capable individual. 
and he acted with impressive speed and was quick to get his authority recognised in England and Normandy. And by the end of June 1199, he was in Rouen, which is the capital of Normandy, with a large army, and he managed to push Philip back. So John managed to stop the, the invasion very quickly, and he got his authority recognised. People realised that John was the king. And in 1200, John and Philip made a peace treaty called the Treaty of Le Goulet. This peace treaty meant that actually there wasn't going to be any invasion attempts as long as the terms of the treaty were held. Now the next slide is going to look at the terms of the treaty. We're going to quickly look at any positives and negatives that this may have. So Philip accepted John as Richard's heir. Who's that going to benefit? Well, in this case, it's going to be John. Because if Philip accepts John, then other people will obviously recognise this also. But it also takes away the threat of Philip um, to, John's, to John's throne. Philip agreed with John's rights to his continental lands. Arthur was made Duke of Brittany and paid homage to John. This is going to cause both good and bad. Philip agrees that John has the right to that, that land that we spoke about at the beginning of the lesson. All that different coloured land that wasn't blue. However, by making Arthur Duke of Brittany, Arthur is still there. Arthur could be a threat if things go wrong. The key thing here is, is that Arthur paid homage to John, which means loyalty. It means that effectively, John is Arthur's lord. That's a key thing. Treaty gave a boundary between John and Philip. So basically, it gave them a line where they had to stay. If there's boundaries, Philip can't go into John's, John can't go into Philip's. Now, John did lose some land, but the important thing about this boundary was he kept Chateau Gallard, a very impressive fortress which was going to significantly help John keep hold of Normandy. At least we thought. John paid 20,000 marks for his own continental land. So even though Philip agreed with John's rights, John actually paid for those rights with quite a substantial sum of money. 20,000 marks is a lot of money. John gave two of his closest allies to Philip. The Count of Flanders and the Count of Bologna played, uh, paid homage to Philip. This was going to weaken John as he's losing allies that Richard had basically set up before his death. And the last one, which is a really big turning point. John agreed to be Philip's vassal. So Philip is basically John's ultimate lord. So if John does anything wrong, Philip can call him to court. And if John doesn't go, Philip can basically get rid of this whole treaty and begin invading John and his land. This was probably one of the biggest errors that John made in this treaty because it gave Philip the right to undo the treaty if John did something wrong. So we need to think now. In 1199, John was probably in a good position. Does this treaty help him? Who does it benefit more? It does have elements of benefiting John in the short term. But in the long term, this benefits Philip. This gives Philip the power to invade if John does something wrong. And as we know, John definitely does do things wrong later on. So that's the Treaty of Le Goulet. Now to look at how John loses Normandy, we have to look at five stages. And these five stages, this could be a potentially very popular question in the exam. We need to understand five stages so then we can hopefully write three paragraphs in a 12 or 16 marker. So stage one, John marries Isabella of Angeline, which causes Hugh Le Signan to appeal for justice. We'll go through this in a minute in a bit more detail. John doesn't attend court in 1202, and Philip declares that John must forfeit all of his land. Stage three, Arthur of Brittany pays homage to Philip for the Angevin territories in France. Stage four, Arthur is murdered while being held prisoner by John. Many of John's barons defect, which means change sides, and lords from Maine, Anjou and Poitois pay homage to Philip. 
The Bretons also put support behind the French king. And then stage five, Philip takes possession of Normandy after a successful siege at Chateau Gallard. John is too slow to respond. John actually leaves Normandy in 1203, never comes back, which allows Philip to take over Chateau Gallard. It allows him to attack it constantly for six months. So I'm going to go through each reason. Now, we're going to imagine that we've got a, a 12 marker. Explain why John lost Normandy by 1204. And we've got three paragraphs here. We've got John's marriage to Isabel of Angeline, murder of Arthur of Brittany, and John's mistakes and the fall of Chateau Gallard. Now, if you want to do a revision task here, in one column, three to five facts, your history facts, and then in the next part, explain how this led to the fall of Normandy. I'm going to go through each piece of information, and as I do, I'll underline a few key terms, and then as you finish each one, go back to this table and fill it in. Or if you were doing this as a revision task, um, then you could potentially you could potentially do a spider diagram. So the first one, John's marriage to Isabella of Angeline. So when John became king, he inherited an empire that was in a good position. We know this. Within five years, he had lost Normandy, which Richard was able to take over. The collapse of Angevin control began with John's marriage to Isabel of Angeline. Now, this is the spark. This event sparks the problems. So the marriage was the beginning of everything. So this is key. The event gave Philip an excuse to launch an attack that left him in control of Normandy. Isabel was the heiress to Angeline, an area between Poitois and Gascony. Now, if John had control of this land, he could control the area more effectively. But the problem was, Isabel was promised to another man. She was betrothed, which promised, to John's vassal, Hugh de Le Signan. Now, in those days, promises were a big deal. Okay, But John ignored the rights of his vassal and married her. He should have given Hugh Le Signan land as compensation, but he acted recklessly. And when Hugh complained, John asked him to choose a powerful person to fight for him. And they fight off and the winner gets Isabel. But John had one of the most powerful men in England as his champion, a man called William Marshall. So Hugh backed down. Ignore that typo there. Now as a result, Hugh then went to John's lord, Philip and appealed for justice and as John was being controlled by Philip it meant Philip could attack John as John was being a disobedient vassal. Philip summoned John to court in 1202 and John refused to attend. Now when John refused this gave Philip the uh, this gave Philip the chance to declare all of John's land forfeit and accepted Arthur as the lord to all Angevin lands. This event undid the treaty of Le Joulet. So now in the eyes of Philip, Arthur was the lord of all Angevin land in France except Normandy, which Philip claimed for himself. So symbolically, Philip was in control of Normandy. All Philip needed to do now was gain control of it. So John's marriage to Isabella of Angeline is a real turning point as it un basically undoes the Treaty of Le Joulet. Okay, that's the first point. Second point is John murdering Arthur. Now, even though John did have problems, he was a good soldier. And in 1202, he marched to Mirabeau, where Arthur was, and captured him, which took pressure off Normandy. But things went wrong very quickly. Now, don't forget, by 1202, Arthur was the, the lord of the Angevin territory. By capturing Arthur, John had two things he should have done. He should have put him on trial, or he should have offered a ransom. But John's actions led to people turning against him. So in April 1203, Arthur was brutally murdered. He shouldn't have been murdered, as I just mentioned. But John had him castrated, tied a rock to round, rocked round him, and threw him in the river scene. This event led to John's barons joining Philip's side due to the horrific nature of the murder including barons from Maine, Anjou and Poitois, who all swore homage to Philip. 
John's support was decreasing very quickly. The more people that John upset, the easier it was going to be for Philip to try and take over Normandy because Philip was gaining more support and John was losing it significantly. If John loses barons, John loses um, an army. And if John loses an army, he's going to have to start paying for it, which John isn't able to do because his finances are a lot shorter at this stage because Richard had just died, we paid the ransom, we went through a crusade. So John murdering Arthur was a big turning point as it, it made a lot of people turn against John. And then the last point, John's mistakes and the fall of Chateau Gallard. So in 1203, while John was trying to push Philip back, John decided to go back to England, which was a really confusing decision because Normandy was under serious threat in 1203 and even one of the, uh, one of the, most, uh, the most powerful knights in England, William Marshall, criticised John and said it was a bad move. A lot of people in Normandy actually felt as if John deserted them, left them. Now some people believe that John came back to England because he didn't have enough money to carry on fighting. This was, as I said, because England had to pay a crusade and ransom before Richard's death, while Philip changed the way he collected money and became very wealthy. So in 1203, some people think that John actually ran out of money, came back to England to raise money to then go back. The problem was... John never came back. So John did not go back to Normandy. He thought that the Pope could get involved to help a peace treaty between Philip and John. Um, but also John thought he had a lot more time to prepare. However, in 1204, March 1204, the biggest event happened. Chateau Gallard fell to Philip. Philip was attacking that castle since the summer of 1203. And the people within Chateau Gallard thought that John was going to send goods to help them, but nothing ever arrived. Even though Chateau Gallard was an incredibly powerful castle, it needs things to actually keep going, and John never sent them. Once it fell, Philip was able to overrun Normandy, town after town, and by June 1204, three months after he captured Chateau Gallard, Ruin, the capital of Normandy, surrendered and Philip had physical control of Normandy. This was a huge blow to John's reputation. He gained the nickname Soft Sword, which show how weak of a, uh, of a soldier he was in the eyes of his people. Now, a good practice is to look at the three factors and write a peel paragraph. Now this question, medium peels are probably acceptable. It's going to be really hard to get three lots of evidence explained. So as a practice for the final part of this video, choose one of the factors. I've given you a factor on the screen. One reason why John lost Normandy was the marriage to Isabel of Angeline. Complete that paragraph as a revision exercise and then you have got this lesson. Why did John lose Normandy by 1204? And a little spoiler alert, it doesn't get any better from here.